One of the most common questions I get is from people struggling with making a decision or liking their decision, not second guessing themselves. Let me know in a comment below if you are struggling with a major decision, if you have recently made a decision, if you are second guessing yourself and wondering if you did the right thing and wishing you could undo it, I totally understand. Let's talk about how to like your decisions. And this concept is a very powerful one. I have been through this, I am going through it myself, and let me start out by saying we never know what the road not taken would bring. Very often we make a decision, we do something, and then not only do we second guess ourselves in terms of why did I do that, maybe I shouldn't have done it. It could be something as simple as ordering something at a restaurant. You order a certain meal and you think, oh, I should have gotten this. I think you can relate. It could be something major, such as moving. I did a whole series on the Healthy American channel all about moving and people liking it, not liking it. Some of them were celebrating their decision. Some of them were regretting their decision. So those are major life changes. Perhaps getting married, getting unmarried, um, adding to your family maybe retiring from a job, taking a new job, undergoing a medical procedure, foregoing a medical procedure. All of these are decisions that we make and they are large decisions, life-changing decisions, and then smaller decisions that some of us think are life-changing or disastrous. So decision-making is a part of life. Some people are gripped by indecision because they fear that they're going to make the wrong decision. Let me say something that I want you to take to heart. There are no wrong decisions. What? You're going to say, of course there are. I've made wrong decisions in the past and I regret them. I've done a whole series about changing your past, about looking at your past differently. And this is such an important concept that I want to underline the principle again. We don't know what the road not taken would have brought us. You may say, well, it, I know what it was. It was fine. Whatever I was doing before was just fine. Well, that was then. You are different now. It may have been that if you stayed doing what you were doing, there may have been something disastrous that could have happened. It could have been the exact um, opposite of what you had hoped to turn out. So we never know the road not taken. That is called speculation. When you are speculating on what could have happened, what you should have done, what you couldn't have done, what you wish you could have done. Here's the problem with speculation. Are you ready? It robs you from living your life now. Speculation is a mechanism of denial. Speculation prevents you from actually moving ahead in your life, and speculation actually prevents you from enjoying the decision that you made. You had some reason for making that decision. Hopefully you thought about it. Maybe you didn't think about it long enough to your liking. Maybe you feel that you were compelled into this decision because of somebody else's desire. So let's look at liking your decision. I'm a huge fan of writing things down. So I recommend that you get your pen, you get your notebook, and you make a list of all of the reasons why you did something or all of the reasons why you didn't do something. And let's talk about things that have already been done, all right? And we can apply this to decisions in the future. Think about all of those things, make a list. And when you are looking at that list, I want you to feel the fullness of your conviction of making that decision in the past. Let's take something such as leaving a job. Many of you are leaving jobs. You decided that you no longer wanted to be in the situation. You wanted to find something different. So make a list of all of those reasons why you left your job. Or maybe you're facing that decision right now, all of the reasons why you want to leave your job. Now you can make another list of all of the reasons why staying in your job would be good. You can make a list of reasons against that decision. But I want you to focus on liking your decision. You had some reasons for doing it. 
And let's think about that and then think about determining that you are going to make the best of things. I'm going to like the decision I made. You're going to decide to like your decision, right? The second decision is deciding that you like your first decision. And I'm telling you, this is a game changer. I really don't know why other than it's human nature and maybe some sort of survival mechanism. And I also believe that our brains are wired to scan for danger. So even though we made a decision and we liked it at that moment, the next phase, we can start to double guess our, you know, a double guess. How about that? We can uh, doubt ourselves and we can think about it again and say, I don't know if that was the right thing. Now I'm getting all these other signals that perhaps this wasn't the right thing for me. Guess what? You can make another decision. You can decide to change things. You can decide to go back. You can decide to pivot, as they say. You can decide to make a U-turn, but make sure that you are doing it because you want to like your decision. Otherwise, you're going to be spinning in this cycle of, I don't know what to do. I also believe that backtracking on your decision, second guessing your decision, second guessing yourself is a way of self punishment. Perhaps deep down, there's something in you that doesn't believe that you deserve to experience the goodness of your decision. You may have left a horrible job. You may have found a new job and you're still thinking about that old job. Maybe I could have kept it. I wish I had done something differently. You are preventing yourself from actually enjoying your current reality. So speculation of what could have happened. I wish I could have done it differently. It actually is a way of keeping you stuck, except if you learn from that. So let's say that you made a decision and you realize, I didn't really think it all the way through. You make a list of all of those things that you know now that you didn't know before, and you don't beat yourself up about it. You thank the decision that you made because now you've grown. Now you know more. Now you have more wisdom. You have more experience. You have more knowledge. You have more maturity. So you can thank that decision for all of these lessons. Friends, we are going to continue to make decisions throughout our entire life. I had to decide what I was going to talk about today, what I'm going to wear, what I'm going to eat for lunch. You're going to decide what time you go to bed, who you're going to talk to today. Our life is filled with decisions. Let's determine that we are going to be thoughtful about our decisions and we are going to like our decisions. So giving it the thought, making the list, considering it, praying about it, maybe even give it, getting insight and input from others. But once you make that decision, the very next decision is to decide to like your decision. I'm telling you, this is a game changer. All right, friends, let's see who we have on board with us today. And then I have a uh, something that I want to tell you about, a decision that I made and something I'm going to be doing for this channel. You know I have two channels on YouTube. I have The Healthy American, and I broadcast Monday through Friday starting at 5 p.m. And then I have Living Swell, and I'm so happy to have all of you here. For the next few weeks, maybe through uh, the end of September, I am going to be broadcasting weekly on this channel. So Monday mornings, I will be here with you live, for our positive encouragement. I will give you a theme for the week, and our theme is liking your decisions. So your homework this week is going to be thinking about your decisions and then deciding to like your decisions and to decide to like the decisions that you didn't like before so that you can learn from them, grow from them, apply your lessons going forward. The reason why I'm going to be broadcasting weekly instead of daily is I need to rest my voice. I don't know if you can hear it. I am on the verge of losing my voice. I love nothing more than doing live broadcast with my lovely audience. And I love your feedback. I love the interaction. So be sure that you set your alarm and you set your clock and you mark it on your calendar. Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, we will kick off our Living Swell week with my topic of the week. So think of it kind of like a weekly podcast. 
And then join me if you want more tips and tools against tyranny. We will be diving into that on a daily basis at 5 p.m. So you'll still be able to see me daily here once a week in the mornings on Living Swell for the next few weeks. And then I'll let you know when I uh, may be able to expand those broadcasts and then back again in the afternoons where we roll up our sleeves, we dive in and we tackle the tyrants. I bring you breaking news always with a positive spin because I know that I'll be able to handle whatever comes up. I know there's always another way and I'm going to find it. And I know that these things are happening for me. They're not happening to me. And I always have an opportunity to grow. Thank you everybody for being on board with me. Can't wait to see you in an upcoming broadcast. Big shout out to the moderators, Valerie, Rhonda. I so appreciate you. I'll rest my voice now and I'll see everybody back this afternoon at 5 p.m. over at The Healthy American uh, with Peggy Hall.